the beetles. The beetles are insects having their forewings thickened to constitute sheaths or covers for the lower pair used in flight. Their mouths are adapted for biting and they pass through a complete metamorphosis. There are about 90,000 species, ranging from minute creatures to huge lumbering goliaths. When walking, the beetle presents a trim appearance, enveloped in a gleaming armor of the highest polish and often ablaze with metallic tints. But when it flies, the elytra or wing covers are thrown up and a pair of soft silken wings flutter out, stiffen, and bear the beetle away. The head of the beetle is small and adapted for biting. The digestive apparatus is simple. The most noticeable feature of many are the antennae, which often are very long and ornamental. The eyes are compound. The legs are strong and powerful. The beetles spend little time in flying, many being flesh eaters and continually searching for game under refuse and in dark places. They lay eggs, which are deposited in the ground or in special cavities made in wood, which hatch into larvae. In the tiger beetle, the larvae resemble white worms. In the rose beetle, they look like grubs. These, in time, change to helpless pupae. The June bug, the beetle which dashes into rooms blindly charging lights of all kinds is a familiar example. Its larva is white and very destructive. On my lawn in California, the Bermuda grass often turns white and sections a foot square can be lifted, having been cut off from the roots by this destructive larva of the June bug, which, during this stage of its existence, lives underground, eating roots and plants of various kinds. For two years, this beetle lives a subterranean marauding life, growing and shedding its skin. It is often considered a complete animal, but at the end of this period, it changes into what is called the pupa stage, which does not move. The pupae are white, soft, helpless creatures which are found around the roots of rose bushes in great number, and which are so appreciated by mockingbirds that they and the blackbirds invariably follow me about the garden when I am overturning the soil with the trowel. Finally, the pupa changes into the perfect insect. The larvae of some of the spring beetles remain in the grub stage five years and are known as wireworms, doing a vast amount of damage. The girdler beetle bores holes in tender limbs of the hickory, then systematically girdles the limb below the eggs, so that by the time the young hatch, they have soft, dead wood to feed upon. The bark borer penetrates the bark of trees and cuts winding tunnels here and there in which are placed its eggs. Among the most attractive of the beetles are the carnivorous sexton beetles. They find dead bodies with all the skill of a vulture, burrow beneath them, and deposit their eggs within the body where the young feed. The work these beetles accomplish in destroying animals and even burying them renders them valuable scavengers. Among the destructive beetles are the buffalo bugs, which have been introduced from Europe. The larva of these is a strange, fuzzy little creature. The weevils are the bane of the dweller in the tropics. They infest bread, cake, and flour, and meal of every kind. 
Perhaps the most dreaded by the northern farmer is the potato bug, which plays havoc with potatoes, often ruining the entire crop, the vines being covered by the soft and disagreeable larva, more like a worm than anything else. The diving beetle is an interesting insect, being a flyer and a swimmer. Its hind legs are fringed and adapted for swimming. On the forelimb is a sucker, or several, by which the beetle can attach itself to any object. The larva is a ferocious creature armed with a pair of fierce jaws with which it attacks small fishes, frogs, tadpoles, and game very much larger than itself. End of chapter 24.